Hello, welcome back to Cinema Burger, where I bring you movie reviews from a different perspective. Today we're here to talk about the Netflix original movie, Midnight Sky, based on the book, Good Morning Midnight, and it was starring and directed by George Clooney. It also stars Felicity Jones, David Oyello, Kyle Chandler, Damian Bichar, and Tiffany Boone. It takes place in the future where Earth has become uninhabitable and scientists have found a moon of Jupiter that is habitable. So most of Earth has gone to this moon and there's a few people still on Earth because they only just evacuated recently. And, uh... George Clooney's character is a researcher in the Arctic, just kind of watching the skies, waiting for any other spaceship missions to come back from Earth to warn them not to come back to Earth and go to that moon. So, first off, the movie shows a very grizzled and pessimistic George Clooney, which is a, a big change from his normal characters. He usually plays optimistic, clean-shaven, distinguished-looking characters, so to see him like all with like a big beard and grizzled and a little down is a nice change, and I would love to see more old, grizzled George Clooney. So, he's go he, George Clooney also has cancer, so he opted not to go when they were evacuating this research base. Because I guess he felt, why waste a life or resources on someone who's going to die? I mean, it's bleak, but it makes sense. So, he's alone in this base. You see his day-to-day -day activities. He gets, like, an infusion of something, like blood transfusions. And all of a sudden, he goes into this room and he realizes this little girl was left behind. Now, he thinks he knows who it is because someone was looking for their daughter as they were evacuating but they were assured that they were on the ship with them. So he's with this little girl. The girl isn't really talking much. She's, like, afraid. So it's just, like, the dynamic between him and the little girl. He's old and grizzled. She's, like, cute and a little girl. And that's a really nice dynamic. They uh, focus on her, uh, him trying to make her feel comfortable and things like that. And then they cut to one of the research teams in space. They're on this spaceship. And it's astronauts David Oyello, Felicity Jones, Kyle Chandler, and the other two. And I know in the book, I'm sure it focuses on both of these stories, but usually in a movie there's an A and a B plot. Like something that's the main focus and then something to cut back and forth to to give a little break from the main plot. But the research team in space feels like another A plot and it feels like they're constantly clashing for control of the movie. Now, like I said, maybe the book handled it better, but I felt it's either both of these plots could have been a main story on their own. And I feel showing the research team in space takes away from the dynamic with George Clooney and the little girl. Because you go from, like, a big thing in space, there's, like, an asteroid field hitting this space station, so they got to go out and fix things. I'm like, okay, that's cool and interesting. But then when you cut back to the research base of George Clooney and the girl, it seems like it seems less interesting by comparison, which isn't fair for that George Clooney story. Now, like I said, George Clooney directed this movie, and it looks beautiful. But I thought maybe this plot would have worked better as a TV show or something, because then they could really give full focus to both stories. But uh, at one time, the B-Shirt Space is able to communicate with George Clooney, so that's when they fully connect, but... For, like, this movie is about two hours or so, but for, like, good 30-minute periods, they only focus on the research team in space, and they kind of forget about George Clooney, which I don't think is right. Because that whole dynamic of, like, the one character with 
by themselves or with someone else really shows the acting ability of somebody. And to be honest, the research team plot in space where they have to like fix the radar and stuff after the asteroid field, like it's cool, but it just feels like a ripoff of Gravity, the movie Gravity with uh, Sandra Bullock. And then they finally cut back to George Clooney again. And I, I really think that's the more interesting plot, in my opinion, just because we've seen a lot of stories where it's like, oh, they're, they're in space, and then something goes wrong, they have to fix it, some people may die, whatever. Like, we've seen it before, like, this particular version of it, it looks, like I said, the, all the space stuff looks great, the movie looks very crisp and clear. But, I don't know, the back and forth, I felt could have been handled a lot better. And to be honest, like, this other plot really doesn't add much to the overall story of, like, okay, George Clooney is dealing with his own mortality and things like that, and there's this girl. Now, one of the astronauts, played by Felicity Jones, knew George Clooney when they were younger, because George Clooney, when they were looking for, like, other planets to to go because Earth was becoming uninhabitable. She, he had a research partner who eventually had a daughter. It's not his daughter, but he knew her as a kid. Now, they got an actor to play a younger George Clooney, and his name is Ethan Peck. Now, I don't know if they dubbed his voice over to make him sound like George Clooney, but or he's just able to do a really good George Clooney impression, but he looks enough like a young George Clooney, but the voice is, like, spot on. And that's really nice to see instead of seeing, like, a digitally de-aged George Clooney. I'm glad they didn't do that because I feel like they do that too many times now in movies and it really never looks real enough to be believable. So I'm in favor of getting young actor look-alikes instead of just using technology to make an older actor look young. A really bad example of that was from, uh, The Irishman with Robert De Niro. Now it has a good plot twist and you can kind of see it coming, but overall I enjoyed the movie, I enjoyed both plots, the problem is it's like pick one to be the main plot. Like I said, maybe the book did it handle this better, maybe this would have worked better as a TV show. Overall I would give this a three and a half out of five burgers. I would give it more, but it's because of the constant clash for control between the two plots of the movie. It can't decide what it wants to focus on, and that, in my opinion, is its biggest fault. Alright, so Midnight Skies on Netflix, it came out in October, November of 2020. It's definitely worth watching, like, check it out, it looks nice. Alright, we've got... A couple more 2020 movies coming up, and then we'll start 2021 movies by at least March. The rest of this month of February, we're going to finish out the 2020 movies, and then move on. Alright, I'm Scott Berger, and I'll see you next time.